I've got from teenage multimillionaires, 17, to the biggest transaction in the history of the world, $500 billion last year by one of my mentees. $500 billion with a B. A number of you have started a business at one time in your life. The first 50,000 or 100,000 euros in your revenue when you start is geometric growth. So everybody that has ever started a business, generated any income, that's geometric growth because it's starting from ground zero to the first 50, 100. Everybody with me? Okay. What happens? You stop playing to win and you start playing not to lose. If when, not if, but when you decide that you really want to invoke permanent change, you start playing to win all the time. And nobody preaches that. They say, keep six months of reserve in your uh, uh, bank account, right? In case you lose your job. That's a, that's a common bullshit. For the first 30 years of my life, I, I spent 125% of every penny that I made every year. I was always, as you would say, in debt instead of debt. I don't know why I call it debt, but any in debt. Why? Because I didn't want any backup. I didn't want any plan B. I either succeeded or died financially. I stopped that when I turned 60. My lovely wife, who's a chartered accountant, international tax expert, coincidentally, <coughs> we started getting rid of our assets and turning to cash, except for the castle. So we're all in cash, so I don't spend 125% of what I made since I'm 60. But for, from the time I was 20 to the time I was 60, I did. I've got from teenage multimillionaires, 17, on my side, to the biggest transaction in the history of the world, $500 billion last year by one of my mentees. $500 billion with a B. Neom. What did he do? He convinced the Saudi government and the uh, Jordanian government and the Egyptian government, mostly Saudi, to put up $500 billion to build the new city of the future called Neom. It's, it's, all, it's all online. And he's the CEO, Dr. Klaus Kleinfeld. I've been, I've been his mentor since uh, 1997. Uh, and uh, so I've got from teenage multimillionaires to the biggest deal on the planet. Everything I'm in between. I've got no education, I mean literally no education, to multiple PhDs, Oxford scholars, etc. And there's no, there's no rhyme or reason, there's no real rationale why a PhD from Oxford to a guy that uh, got out of the third grade, out of school when he was eight or nine years old. There's none except desire, sacrifice. You have a lot of success stories. But Correct. There are people who not succeed. Mentees. Oh, absolutely. Well, what's the average? A hundred percent of the people that follow the seven steps succeed. They may only make a hundred thousand euros or a hundred million. The people, 40% of the people drop out because they can't follow the steps, 40%. So what do they do wrong? They do wrong. Common uh, mistakes. Uh, well, most of them, and you know a couple of the guys, I know. they go from the castle to the bank and they take the money, except they're robbing the bank without a mask and without a gun. That's how easy it is to get money today. It's the lowest interest rates in 5,000 years, the lowest interest rates. So they go to the banks, and we show you how to get money from the bank in a legal way, just as you did, just as the other couple of Dutch guys you and I both know. But then you don't do good things with it. I just had one of my superstars uh, arrested two days, th 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 four days ago for presumably taking $125 million in, in a bad way. That's a lot of money, $125 million. But we show you how to do it, legally. Absolute, 100% if you follow the steps. But you can just kind of vary a little and not follow the steps and you can, you know. And you slide. Correct. All the way. Correct. But 125 million, I saw a few eyebrows. That's his one kid, he's 28 years old. 125 million dollars. What were you fucking doing at 28 years old? Other so than having your Geneva cover thumb up your ass. What's their secret? Why can they do it? They, because they, they want change. Not everybody that comes to seminars, Michael, wants change. It's like when I was growing up uh, sm smoking dope and doing heroin, and well, I mean, not you, in the 60s was what you did where I come from. That's it, because everybody else did it. So you did it. 
Well, now everybody, well, you know, it's like sitting in the hall and all oh, the sun is great. Can I have another cappuccino, please? Uh, well, you come to seminars, you're filling up the day. Most, most people, we've had people that I've met that, by the way, that 700 book kid came to this council seminar and he's about to close his first deal. He might have been today or yesterday. He's 19 years old. He's 20 now. 20 years old. 20 years old. But they, they really want to evoke change. They, you know, look in the mirror. Most of you, don't, you know, don't like what you, they see. Not just because you, you're too fat, you're too skinny, you're bald, you're gray, whatever. It's because you know what you could have been. What's the best advice? How the, do you the, the best advice is find something you love. Find something that can change a billion lives. Zuckerberg is a classic example. He changed more than a billion lives. Added value. <laughs> Correct. Added value, change, you make a billion lives better, potentially. You may not get to a billion people, but potentially you can make a billion lives better and the odds have just gone geometrically up for you to become a billionaire. And if not a billionaire, a whole bunch of money. There's going to be uh, six billion cell phones sold between now and 2030. Six billion more cell phones. There's going to be, uh, there's going to be um, third world countries are going to uh, uh, grow their consumption of Coca-Cola, soft drinks and that kind of stuff by a thousand percent between now and 2030. I can go down a whole list of things, but you're not working on any of those. If any of you are speak French and are black, go to Haiti. They have nothing. If any of you speak Spanish uh, and uh, if Trump doesn't drop the, the, bomb, the trigger on Cuba, go to Cuba. They have nothing. Sally and I were just there. If any of you speak Farsi or Arabic, go to Iran. But now I'm not saying that because, you know, we're going to bomb Iran probably and don't go to Syria. Just like I told people, if you spoke Russian, go to Russia back when the wall fell. Just like I told people when China opened up, learn Chinese. We send our youngest son. He speaks fluent uh, Mandarin. Uh, but no. Oh, Holland is have See? How many are willing to go to Haiti, learn French? Nobody. Anybody? No, I'm not going to ask. Those are just five off the top of my head. I got, I got 1,005 more. And we have people in Haiti right now. I have people in Iran right now. I have people in Russia right now. I have people in China now. If you, Brazil, you speak Portuguese. Go to Brazil. So what you say is go there where they need They have no you. infrastructure. They have nothing. You can help other people and make money. Legally. That's the deal. Yes, sir. Give some, get some. And you'll be helping them more than they're helping you. So you give more than you take. That's always the rule. Correct. Correct. Honest, moral, ethical has got to be the three basis benchmarks. Even though you may sound that I think I sound different, but honest, moral, ethical, those three. And um, there's so much money, God Almighty. Uh, one of my German kids, um, the last 18 deals he's done, he sent me his uh, stats, average 2% was the borrowing rate from the banks. 2%. And it's easier to do a 5 million than a 500,000, and it's easier to do a 50 million than a 5 million, and it's easier to do a 5 billion same paperwork, but you've got to have a big dream, big ideas, big ideas. And there's certainly a lot of big ideas, and some of those ideas are on the, on the Internet. They are. Most of them won't get there, but, I mean, look at all the incubators, etc., cetera, in um, the Silicon Valley-type places there are on the planet now. They're all over the place. And money, and there's the, e the, the European Union has money. The International Monetary Fund has money. The World Bank has money. I'm the only person on the planet that I know of that sends people to those three places to get money. The guy that got money from the uh, uh, World Bank took him 80 phone calls to 80 diff di different departments until he found the right department to get the money. The World Bank doesn't know what they're doing. The International Monetary Fund doesn't know what they're doing. The EU for sure doesn't know what they're doing. They got tons of money. And governments, if they don't use the money, they lose it. 
But financing by banks has been changed over the past years. Yeah. Yeah. So if one go, goes to a bank now, what should you do? What should you tell them? Well, no, well, you, you got, no, you got to come up with uh, our system. My system is based on you find a mentor that's done it before you. You put a dream team together. And uh, so it's not just you. It's you with five or six guys that are gals that are really world class. And you've got plenty of them here in the Netherlands. I was telling you about one of my dream teams from the 90s with some very uh, well to do guys here in the Netherlands. And uh, you're going to, you know, and we're going to change. My idea is better than motherhood, apple pie, and religion. I mean, we're going to change the way the world is today. I mean, those are the kind of words you, that they use now, and the bankers give you the money. As outlandish as you, 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 the request might seem, they give you the money. They, I don't mean give it. They take it in the credit committee, yada, yada, yada. So I'm not saying that they just you know, fall down dead and they throw the money at your feet. It'll, it'll seem that way in some of the cases. Because all the, like right now, uh, it used to be green. Everything green, green power was hot. That's passe now. Cybersecurity is the hottest thing on the planet today. Cybersecurity. There is nothing hotter. Cybersecurity. Pharmaceuticals is hot. Hot, 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 hot. Telecom? Well, still telecom, but there's, now there's different areas of telecom. Healthcare. Um, uh, old age, uh, uh, assisted living, it's hot, 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 because none of you want to take care of your parents. You kick them out to the curb, you want to put them in some place for 1,100 euros or 1,200 euros or... I Luxury mean, elderly homes. Yeah, but they, you can pay up to 25,000 euros a month for the country club elderly homes. Dentists? Rolling up dentists. Dental, den, dentists are hot. We have a dentist here. Uh, Still hot? Uh, um, uh, what do you call it? It doesn't matter where you do that. Here you can, you in can the take, States, They wherever. don't have yellow pages anymore, but they used to have yellow pages. You can just throw the yellow pages down, and wherever it opens up. Um, physiotherapy. Who, who is a dentist going to give his practice to? You want a motivated seller between 55 and 65, 67-ish who has no plan of succession, meaning they have nobody to give their business to, their kids don't want it. Crematoriums are hot, pun intended. Funeral homes are hot. Cemeteries are hot. But see, you don't want to do those. I can just tell by the look in their faces. Right now, uh, um, radiology clinics are hot. Oh, God. Uh, uh, surgical uh, care centers are hot. I mean, I can just go on and on and on because there's no plan of succession. Meaning, what are you gonna do when the four doctors that had the radiology practice, now they're in their 60s or 70s, what are we gonna do with it? They're gonna sell it to some meathead like you, if you're there. But if you don't ask, you don't get. As Bruce the Whipple, one of my great mentees, told me many, many years ago, actually he's not the first person, I've been giving him credit for 25 years, but actually Costa Grazos, the CEO of Onassis Group, who was my mentor, told me, if you don't ask, Mr. Pena, you cannot get. So I used to carry that forward into my uh, love life. If you don't ask, you don't get, right, guys? You named Costa Grazos. Costa Grazos, yes, sir. He was one of your heroes, Correct. mentors. Where did you find your teachers? How did you meet I them? I was in the oil business, and I was uh, in Onassis uh, Tower, Olympic Tower. The shipping on lines. Oil, oil deal in New York City. And this little guy, really well-dressed guy, walked in, shuffled around, talked to some people, and he left. And I said, well, who is that man? He says, he's Konstantin Grazos. He's the chief executive officer of Onassis uh, Shipping. He was the right-hand man for 60 years of uh, Aristotle Onassis. He's head of the Onassis Trust. I mean, he looked like a movie star. So next day I come, this is before they had security in buildings and metal detectors and all that stuff. I went from the top floor down, and I kept on looking for his office, and I found him. And I knocked on the door, his, his assistant opened the door, he says, yes, I'd like to see Mr. Grazos. And he says, oh, do you have an appointment? I go, no. But he could see me through the door, and he goes, and I walked in, and uh, I said, uh, can I buy you lunch? Uh, and uh, that's how uh, the relationship started. But you have to have, you can't go up there stuttering with your hands sweating and dress like you. With the greatest respect. So they actually, do. it's easy to do. Yes, sir. 
It's absolutely dead easy. Almost everybody can do it. Well, follow the rules. Every, you know, everybody, if they dress like a, like a person, like a, like the president of your country. Some people, again, I'm sure this is not the case for your audience, Michael, but some people dress the way you do, kids, because you don't want the opportunity. You've been engaging in self-sabotaging activity so long, it's become a way of life for you. But success leaves clues. If all these guys work 80, 100, 120 hours a week that change the world, success leaves clues. God almighty. Elon Musk is a hard bastard. Henry Ford was a hard bastard. Rockefeller and, you know, well, my, my uh, interfacing with the Heineken family, and he's, he was a hard bastard, you know. So how do you think the world got changed? Slappy happy? Uh, I'll have another cappuccino. Is that how it happened? I don't think so. Now, you may not, you know, my, my, Dan Penny isn't for everybody. I understand that. I can't understand it, really. But my wife tells me, you're not everybody's cup of tea. So I understand it. I don't want to believe it, but I know it's true. I'm 72 years old. But the, all the people I've been privileged to be around, I've been around some big, big hitters. They're all the same. But now, because of everything's on iPhone, they're trying to paint their legacy. Now they don't swear on camera. Now they, they don't do all these things because they want their legacy. I don't give a shit about my legacy.